Located in the heart of Dublin's north inner city, one place has provided acute paediatric care for almost 140 years. A home from home which offers safety at times of uncertainty. This building tells a story of hope, determination and strength. And for the next six weeks, we go behind its doors to share the stories from the theatres and wards, to meet the staff who dedicate their lives to the care of Ireland's children, and to follow the journey of families and their little patients who are in need of vital and life-saving treatment. Welcome to Temple Street Children's Hospital. Day ward, a young girl named Kayla has arrived with her parents, John and Shirley. We were up getting ready for school, and it happened that morning about quarter to eight. She just came down the stairs, and the stuff was in a plastic bottle. It was pink, and she thought it was juice. Well, Kayla drank some acid and it burnt her esophagus. She drank like less than a five mil spoon, so I could hear her screaming from upstairs. When I came down, she was, I'm sick, I'm sick. And next minute I copped the bottle on the counter with the lid off, so I knew she had drank it. We brought her straight over to our own casualty department. They sent us to Mullingar for observation, and she wouldn't open her mouth when we got there. So we were only supposed to stay four hours, but when she got there, she wouldn't open her mouth. So they kept us overnight, just hoped they could see what she opened her mouth the next morning. And when she opened her mouth, the doctor looked in and he could see the back of her throat and her tonsils were all burnt, and she had blisters in her mouth. Kayla was transferred to Dublin, where she was admitted to Temple Street's intensive care unit and received emergency investigation. It's called a barium test where they give you something to drink and they watch it going down on an x-ray and they could see on the, the x-ray that it had narrowed. It couldn't actually get anything down so they had to open her from here down. So we ended up saying we were here for 10 weeks. After stabilising her esophagus, Kayla now requires regular surgery. She gets fed then to a, pee, a peg at night, a peg feed as well, to keep her going if she's not eating. See, scar tissue keeps forming. And, and the it scar keeps, tissue it keep, tightens. tightens it up. We brought up uh, for a procedure where they stick something down her throat, a balloon. It's and called a dilatation. Balloon dilatation. If you imagine your esophagus is one big, long, narrow tube, and uh, you've narrowed it down through the, the kind of injury Kayla's had, so the idea is you pass a little balloon into it, and then you gradually distend this balloon, which opens up the esophagus. We don't know what the next step's going to be, if that doesn't work, like, you know, or if it stops working, if she could have to get a transplant, or there's other things they could do. But they can't keep going like this because she has um, an x-ray every time it's done and then she has to on a stick every two weeks like so it's not it's not good for her and it seemed me when they're under 18 they can only have so many um, oh, she's exposed to uh, radiation, radiation. So she's having nearly an hour every two weeks mm. so it's not very good for her really so as Kayla is prepared for theater her parents face Fantastic another anxious that. wait it becomes like part of your routine, you know, every two weeks or three weeks that you have to, you take a day out, you have to get someone to mind the other kids to come up here, she's come up here, you're here for the day, you know, so it just becomes the norm after a while. It's just another part of life now at the yeah. moment, so it is. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that one of these days we come up for dilatation and the last one, you know, yeah. it'll just stay open. That's what we're kind of hoping for, but we don't know. Say hello at all. You give a smile for the camera. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. 
Upstairs in the top flat surgical ward, little Charlie is also waiting to be transferred to theatre. Um, he was born on the 13th of January. Um, he weighed 6, 12 when he was born. Um, we knew beforehand that he had the cleft lip and palate. We found it out at the 32 week scan. It's not the most severe case, but when he was born, it looked very bad. Uh, but that's because he was so swollen. We found out that he had the palate as well when he was born, so we were, we were kind of expecting it, we were hoping that he didn't have it, so we were prepared for that as well. He, um, he feels just like any normal he, he, baby. He's about seven bottles a day. A day yeah. He sleeps the night and he has no, no problem at all. He's no problem for winding and he's, he's excellent. Like, you know. He's teething now as well at the moment, so uh, he's with really a handful of us. So, you know, he's just he's just mad for grub like yeah. <laughs> Pinche, you're starved. Nobody feeds it all, sure they don't. No. 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 <laughs> a lot of good news. Attending to Charlie and bringing him to theatre today is staff nurse Anya Meehan. Charlie's three months. He's travelled up from Cork today and he's going to have his cleft lip repair done. as both a lip and palate. So today what we're going to do at three months is we're going to suture here. From a nursing point of view, we've admitted him. Um, the doctor has just done his consent there, as you've seen, and the anaesthetist will have to come up and see him and he'll talk to him about going to sleep. There I was checking his blood sugar because Charlie slept right through the night and only had a bottle last night at 11. So just to make sure that his blood glucose levels are okay, we just checked his sugar. Because he's been fasting since last night, I did ring theatre to see could we maybe give him a little bit of a bottle of 7-Up or something this morning there. But um, unfortunately he'll be going at half one and again they have to be fasting a certain amount of time before they go down. So he can't have anything at the minute. Who's Charlie? Where's the smiles gone, Charlie? Are you hiding them again? Are you? He's asleep. I know I'm near full of smiles all day. You're smiles for your mum. Charlie. Charlie. He's so serious. Serious face. Hi. Where's the smiles? Meanwhile, over in the accident and emergency department, one space age hero has arrived at the hospital. Devon was playing with his friends and he tripped on his Buzz Lightyear outfit straight into a cabinet, on the uh, wooden cabinet. And he hurt his head across here. And he has a really deep, just cut, but there was blood everywhere, so obviously I panicked a lot. What age are you, Dev? He's four. It was really like a lot of blood. So my friend, she was holding him and held the towel on him, but she was like, she couldn't stop the bleeding, so called an ambulance. And they were very, they were very quick, like so. They brought us in here. Didn't we go in the ambulance, Devin? And didn't we hear the siren? Yeah. yeah. It's a delight to be in the ambulance. <laughs> but it's his first, first accident, isn't it? As a big boy, hopefully the last. <laughs> as Mum and Devin make their way to get cleaned up. It seems one action man's adventure has been even bigger than normal today. Buzz Lightyear might uh, retire, <laughs> wouldn't you? Yeah. Do you still like Buzz? Yeah. Can we do this side? Put your paw all the over here. Put your paw over here. Can I hold my hand? Yeah. He's going to be OK. They're going to stitch him up, so it's going to be fine, aren't you, Devin? Yeah. Outside theatre, Kayla and her mother face the journey into surgery. She just gets kind of veggie coming down, you know, every time she comes down. But she's fine when she gets in there. They, they sing with her and the whole that, so... She'll just be fine, won't she? Mm -hmm. She's just very thirsty and very hungry. For Kayla, there is no choice but to undergo surgery on a regular basis under the consultation of Mr. Gillick. Kayla's a very uh, brave, she's a stoical kid, and her parents are very understanding. 
Kayla's esophagus was so damaged initially that she had to have a gastrostomy so we could feed her into her stomach. And then once things had settled down a little bit, we could then gradually open up her esophagus by dilating it. But the problem with this is that the esophagus heals by narrowing down and becoming fibrous and stricturing. Uh, and this is a chronic problem. So once you uh, damage your esophagus or your gullet, you really can't, can't repair it. Well, we have to try and strike a balance between dilating her esophagus enough in order that um, she needs it dilated less often and also that she, she can have a normal diet, but at the same time not dilated enough such that we tear or rupture esophagus, which at the moment is, is a risk. It's not as much of a risk as it was in her acute injury, but the risk still persists. Downstairs, Dad waits for news, always hopeful that this time will be different and the outcome will be better. Well, you do be worried, like, you know, but you have to let the doctors do their job, really. They're the ones that know what they're at. That's all you can do, isn't it? At the moment, we're having to give her reasonably regular general anaesthetics and also expose her to radiation reasonably regularly. But we've, we've no option. If we don't, Kayla's gullet is going to narrow down and she will not be able to, you know, eat or drink normally at all. She handles it an awful lot better than I would because the thoughts of it now alone would be killing me, but she doesn't seem to mind at all. She's getting an awful lot of radiation, like, they have to have the x-ray, doing x-rays as they're doing it so they can see what they're doing. And, like, she's way over a quarter for her age, like, you know, down the road, like, you know, it could be cancer or things like that. So we just have to kind of cross that bridge when it comes further down the road and just at the moment try and get her better. And, there's nothing else we can do, you know. Essentially what she's done is she has scarred them. It's, it's, it's so bad. They, they say, he so said hilarious. he's never seen a case as bad as hers. He's been dealing with it as long as he's a doctor, kids swallowing stuff, you know, drinking stuff. He said he's never seen a case as bad. Normally your stuff gets it straight down, but hers is like it closes in parts and then it kind of branches off a little bit and it comes back in. And she's good bits and bad bits, but more so she's more bad bits. Know how SMA Nutrition.ie sponsors Temple Street Children's Hospital.